often you see Laplacian written in this polar form and you sometimes want to check whether this is right and you realize that the calculation involves a lot of steps so I want to go over this calculation in this video uh, I will however shorten some parts of it by using a technique that I made uh, which I couldn't find in any other books so let's start with the polar, polar coordinate system uh, you know that x is r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and you can solve these relationships for r and theta, and you get this. Of course, there is some angle plus pi sometimes, but that doesn't really do much when you're just trying to find the relationship between the derivatives. So we're going to ignore that. Now, we're going to assume these basic derivative rules, and then try to differentiate r by x, and because r is square root of x squared plus y squared if you differentiate using this second rule you end up with this because of the chain rule and replacing x by r cosine theta and replacing this by r gives you cosine theta and these are very straight calc for very straightforward calculations so i'm going to leave this to you and uh, you should be able to follow these calculations with, with no problem anyways uh, doing these gives you that uh, all these partial derivative results and let's say you have a function of r and theta what does it mean for differentiating f by x well uh, if you have a dependence diagram like this where f is a function of r and theta but r is square root of x squared plus y squared so it's a function of x and y same can be said of theta it's a function of x and y in this differential equation, if you ask how f would change with respect to how f would change with respect to x, then changing x will change r and then it will change f. Plus changing x will change theta and then it will change f. So adding these, you get the following chain rule uh, going through r and going through theta. There are two ways that changing x affects the value of f, and then you're adding this, but uh, because we know that uh, round r over round x is cosine theta and also this uh, round theta over round x is this negative r to the negative 1 sine theta we get the following result you can do the same thing for y and get another pair of result and these can be written in the following form differentiating by x is same thing as cosine theta times differentiating by r minus r to the negative 1 times sine theta differentiation by theta and the same thing for round y okay so we could just continue on differentiating uh, and calculating the second derivative by applying this twice and also applying this twice and adding them they will require a huge number of calculations and uh, I, f I kind of thought about how to make this simpler uh, there is actually a very short answer using something called the Hodge star operator, but that's for really uh, senior math major college student or uh, grad student. So I was thinking about how to do this without having to use those uh, harder math. And here's what I thought. Uh, everyone knows that a squared plus b squared can be factored as a plus ib times a minus ib. So you can factor the Laplacian in this way. And if you factor it like this, then you can represent the, the, this first part of the operator using r and theta by just simply taking this plus i times this, right? And collecting the partial with respect to r and partial with, with respect to theta, you end up with this nice representation using the Euler identity see e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta right and also this one is uh, actually the derivative of the first one so if you differentiate e to the i theta you get i times e to the i theta you could also just take this and multiply by i to see that this is indeed the same as that one so so you can rewrite this in a very simple way and therefore we can rewrite the Laplacian as this times this and what about this one well that's like taking exactly this but all the i's are 
replaced by negative i because these are exactly the same thing only difference is i is negative i so it's like taking the conjugate so replacing all the i by negative i you get this for the second part and now you've represented the Laplacian in this format which means now we just have to calculate this uh, but it's a little more involved because when you apply this to a function uh, once this operator hits this function you get this but then when you try to operate this to this one you realize there are several terms created by the product rule so I first multiply this times this and this times this and then uh, I multiply this times this uh, but this single thing requires a product rule so when this hits the very first part it's this and this this can also hit the second part so I, I wrote down the product rule uh, hopefully you remember the product rule uh, fg prime is f prime g plus f g prime okay so that's what I'm using the same thing can be done for the second part right and this one I'll, I'll leave it as it is and, and uh, defer to later parts okay then we can continue calculating the first one well this is not a function of r at all so when you do a partial derivative it's going to be zero the second one uh, e to the i theta times e to the negative i theta they cancel because it's the easier e to the zeroth power that's one and partial with respect to r twice gives you uh, partial squared with respect to r of f this one, uh, because you're differentiating a function of r with r to the negative 1, negative 1 comes down, canceling this negative 1, you get the r to the negative 2. And once you do that, again, e to the i theta and e to the negative i theta cancel, so that's all you get. And then this one, uh, when you multiply these, uh, you get this simply, and you get partial with respect to r and partial with respect to theta. Now once you're done with this, then uh, you see that this, this first part creates four terms like this, although this one became zero. So if you expand this, you'll get another four terms, just like this, and simplify, you get these as a result. Now uh, one additional thing I did here is that it's, this should really be round theta times round r, but partial derivatives commute, so I just wrote down partial r times partial theta. Okay, so this is what I get, and if you look closely, that then you see that these two, these two red ones cancel, these two green ones cancel, and you end up with exactly what we were trying to prove in the beginning. Now, uh, if you realize that you're multiplying uh, uh, an operator by its conjugate, and uh, if you also realize that in that case, you should only get real things out of this calculation you can actually do a shortcut instead of doing all this work you can just ignore the ones that give you eyes so here's what you could have done so just try operating one by one and anytime it gives you i you just ignore it so first thing uh, if, you, if this multiply and if this gets applied to here this doesn't have any r so this really just applies to this r so you get uh, round r squared and uh, e to the negative i theta and e to the i theta they just cancel so this is the first thing you get and then you multiply this to this but when you you apply this to this because of this i you're going to get something that has i in it in both cases so uh, when you hit this with this you will always get i's and therefore we will completely ignore this term Okay, and then we go to this second one, apply it to here. When derivative with respect to theta applies to here, then you have to use the product rule. So when this hits this, a negative i comes down because of the chain rule. And negative i times i is positive 1. So that's a real number. And canceling e to the i theta with e to the negative i theta uh, will end up giving you exactly this and because that's real I will just write that and then when I multi when I apply this to this where round theta round r is created that one still has i in there so we ignore and then when I hit this with this negative i and i multiplies to positive 1 so you're hopeful but the moment when this derivative with respect to theta 
it's this, it's going to give you negative i. So that's again complex, so we ignore. But when this hits, this round theta just hits round theta f, uh, the everything else just cancels, leaving you with just hearts and negative two. That that is again real, so that's what you get. So uh, just by inspecting which one's real and which one's non-real, uh, you can get this result in a much quicker fashion.